Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Colossians chapter 2 For I would that ye know what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea. Well, that's an interesting church. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Remember, this is a church that Paul has never visited. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and into, unto all riches the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God and the Father and, Christ, and of Christ, in whom are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. It's why we suffer. It's the Godhead incarnate in Christ. Jesus Christ was 100% was man, and he was 100% God. That's a mystery. And yet it's so. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, and we saw that with the Galatian church. Somebody went in that church, and they polluted it. So be careful with someone who's, who's got a slick tongue, fair speech. For I thought I'd be absent in the flesh. For though I be absent in the flesh, he's not there. And yet I am with you in spirit. We're all together as one, one church, unity. Uh, we support missionaries. They're overseas. We're not there. They're not here. But we are in one spirit together in Christ, the Holy Spirit, God the Father. We have that union together that. Listen, no matter how far you're away, we can pray for each other and God would hear our prayers. For though I be absent in you with the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, joining and beholding your order. How, how well you guys are doing, you're orderly. And the steadf steadfastness of your faith in Christ. This church is doing. They're going. They're approved of God. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. That's one of, one of the first verses I, I memorized. So walk ye in him. Are you saved? Yeah, I'm saved. Why aren't you walking in him? That's a commandment of Paul. In the Holy Scriptures. 66 books. You find in chapter 2, verse 6. If you receive Christ Jesus, you are ordered to follow him. Steadfast. Rooted. All right. Now this is the explanation of how to be grounded in Christ. And walking. Rooted. Well, you know what roots are. They're plants that goes right into the soil. They suck up the water. Christ said on the water. And built up in him. In Christ Jesus. Uh, Psalms chapter 1. That good tree. And establish in the faith, nothing else, the faith, as ye have been taught. Oh, look at that. They've been taught. They've been teaching. Not only they're saved, but they're learning. They're in the process of learning. There's yet to be things to be taught for them. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Give God praise. Thanksgiving. Beware at least any man spoil you through philosophy. That's going around in Rome, Greece. Idiots that get up and have great swelling words, 
colleges today, textbooks, and vain deceit after the traditions of men, and that's religion. You have to do this in order to please God. Uh, Mark chapter 7, verse 13. Man makes traditions and calls it religion. Paul says, get away from that garbage. Now what Paul's going to go in this chapter here, he's going to go and rebuke and uh, bring back the fact is we're not under law. It's made itself in one church. He warned the uh, Ephesians about the law. And now here he goes again. We are definitely warned about Paul not to go through the law. Rudiment, uh, and of men after the rudiments, and that is, let me find my note here. Okay. That's, like three. That's the first principle or elements of the world and not after Christ. James 3, 15, 16. So again, we're warned in multiple books of Paul, we've been warned about Jesus Christ not to be deceived. Here we run into philosophy, we run into religion, and we run into the world. We are given a fair warning in the Bible. For in him Christ Jesus dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So Christ is our filling. Christ is all we need. We don't need anything else. And ye are complete in him. That's our completeness. Which is the head of all principality and power. Oh, there's that word again. We know by the scripture who that principality and power is. That's, that's the work of Satan. That's the work of government. And Christ Jesus is a head above all that. In whom also ye are circumcised. With the circumcision made without hands. So this is a spiritual. And, and here's that circumcision again showing up. And Paul is saying, listen, we're not circumcised by flesh. Hebrews 4.12, we have the sword of the spirit. And what he's telling us with the Bible doctrine is when we get saved. Our flesh is cut away from our soul. We have been divided from flesh and soul. This flesh may sin. The wages of sin is death. But the soul is not attached. So when you run over to 1 John and it says we have not sinned. And somebody say, well, why? what's that mean? Oh, you sin all the time. And yes, I do. But that eternal state of me doesn't, my soul. Now, if the rapture is delayed and I die, my flesh will pay for sin. The wages of sin, it, it'll die and corpse and, and deteriorate and decompose, blah, 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 blah. But my soul lives eternal is with God when I die. So, though we are sinners, we are separated from this flesh that makes us sin. And it's an operation, Hebrews 4.12, of the sword of the Spirit, which is quick and powerful. It's a God's scalpel. And it's not the physical circumcision here. Made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh it's not sins of the soul by the circumcision of Christ now we know Jesus Christ was Jewish we know on the eighth day they brought him to Jerusalem we know he was circumcised are you going to try to tell me that verse there the circumcision of Jesus Christ has saved us no it's the circumcision of Christ that he took the sword of the spirit and separated soul and flesh that's what that is buried with him in baptism all right somebody's going around mentioning baptism somebody's going around mentioning circumcision we saw that with the Galatian church and paul is saying listen this is not circumcision of an operation and this is not baptism of water now watch what he says 
wherein also ye are risen with him. All right. Let's say it's water. You do come out of water. Through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead, this baptism and many of the baptisms in the Bible represents death. And when you are baptized, you will stand in a body of water. You will pronounce that, listen, I have received Christ as my Savior. I am saved. That preacher will put you down under the water, typifying death, being buried as Christ was buried. And you are to rise a new creature, a new man, a new Adam, doing newness of life, leaving that flesh underwater. It's a type of grave. It's not a water baptism here. And yet, people will say, water, water, water. Romans 8, 11. And you, watch, being dead in your sins. How are you dead in your sins? Well, first, you've been circumcised, spirit from the body, soul from the body. You've been baptized in the baptism of Jesus Christ, not water, but you put in down flesh and death, and death, and we've talked about that in other books before. Being dead in your sins and uncircumcised of your flesh. So see, you don't have to be circumcised that way. And we're not talking about a, a physical circumcision. We're talking about a spiritual circumcision. And Paul is making it very clear about circumcision and baptism. This is not works of the law. There was no baptism in the law. The only ones that washed were the priests at the brazen labor. No one of Israel was allowed to go anywhere further than that brazen altar. That was it. They couldn't touch the water. They, you couldn't go in that water. Only the priests were to be washed. And you, being dead in your sins and uncircumcised of your flesh. So your flesh is still a sinner. Having he quickened, made alive, together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, you're the new man now. You're dead in your sins. That's your old man. You, he has forgiven you. You're the new man. After this spiritual circumcision, you're a new man. After this baptism of death, you're a new man. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. Well, what do you think that is? Thou shalt not, thou shalt not bring this animal, do this, do that. That's an ordinance. That was against us. The law is against us. Believe it or not which was contrary to us. It took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. He said, I come to fulfill the law. There's no way that I could fulfill the law. Christ had to be 100% and nail that to the cross in order for me to be saved. And having spoiled principalities and powers, there they are again, Christ is victor over Satan and his forces. He made a show of them openly, triumphing the cross, verse 14, over them in it. It's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He beat Satan, he beat death, and he beat the grave by his resurrection. You know how I know I can't save myself? If I were to die... Before the rapture, or even being in my sins. I'm not coming out of that grave. I can't pull myself out of that grave. The only way I'm going to come out of that grave is God is going to raise me out of that grave. And it's going to be by Jesus Christ as a Christian, or as a condemned sinner in a great white throne judgment. I can't do nothing. Let no man therefore judge you in me. Remember those chapters in, in the law? You can't have this. You can't have this. You can't eat seafood. You no, we don't eat pork in this church. We only eat vegan. Paul says, let no man judge you in me. Get away from the law. Or in drink. 
There were certain drinking standards in the Bible. Our respect of a holy day. And we just read a family, you know, all the sacrifices, particular holy days. There was a Sabbath. There was the, uh, uh, the Passover. There was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We're not under that. Now, you can't go say, okay, don't judge me for celebrating Christmas. And don't, you know, judge me for celebrating Easter. Are they in the law? No, they're pagan. I can show you 100% they're pagan and they have nothing to do with Christianity where Paul says you can't have uh, to be at the table of God or the table of Belial. I can show you what's wrong with today's holiday. But what he's talking about right here is somebody's going through Asia saying you need to do the law. The Jews are saying, hey, you got to do the law. Paul's saying, hey, forget about that. Enjoy a lobster. Forget about that. You can eat pork. Forget about that. You don't have to do the Passover. Forget about that. There's no more Sabbath. In the book of Acts, we see the first day of the week is when the church met. Or of a new moon. Now, the new moon was the brand new month of Israel. Israel went by the lunar calendar, and there was a special Sabbath of the new moon, special sacrifices of the new moon. And Paul says, no, we don't do that no more. Now, if you want to talk about if you want to show the Passover, if you want to show an illustration of the Sabbath and the relation of God to and Jesus Christ to each of the, uh, the feasts, okay. Teach it. Preach it. Doctrine. But you don't, that's not your salvation. Now, I could say today, you know what? Instead of Christmas and, and Passover, every, I mean, uh, Easter, every Passover every year, my family, what we're going to do is we're going to read Everything about the Passover. Now, we wouldn't be doing that for salvation. We would read the Passover. We would look at Jesus Christ. But that's not, I have to do it. It'd be for our edification to learn more about Jesus every year. New moon or the Sabbath day, which are shadows of things to come. Now, what's that mean? In the tribulation period, in the millennium, the law is coming back. And you know what I think? I, I think, you, you, I just, I've read the Bible, I've studied the Bible, I know, the Bible says, I am not ignorant of, of Satan's devices. You know what I think Satan's going to do in the tribulation period? You are saved by faith alone, outside of works. Because you know why I say that? You know how you're saved in the tribulation? You are saved by faith and works. The Satan and the churches today are teaching salvation by works and faith. Well, that's wrong. And I bet you he's going to switch it in the tribulation period and say, oh, only faith, but you got to have work. The law is coming back. But the body is of Christ telling us, hey, it's the church. The church is not the law. The church will not be there during Jacob's trouble. Let no man beguile you. Look at that warning again. Paul has never visited this church. He's never seen these people. And he keeps on saying, don't, don't be fooled. Don't be ignorant. Stand fast. Know what happened to you guys. There, there are people out there who are going to deceive you. Of your reward in voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Again, does that mean I seen this angel and he told me and gave me a feather or what? And he told me that these these golden plates and all that. What did Paul say? If any man or angel or anybody brings not this gospel and he puts a condemnation on them, are there angels? Yes, there are. But I'm not going to worship them. I came from a religion that worshipped them. All the religions, the Mormonism, Islam, uh, I don't know about Jehovah's Witnesses, probably not. But those in the Catholic Church are found with angel visions. Now Hebrews 13 says, we can entertain angels unaware. They're not going to show up with wings. All through the Old Testament, all through the Bible, there's not a winged angel. John sees angels in the book of Revelation. 
he tries to bow down before him. One's like, whoa! Twice he tries to bow down before an angel, and, and the angel's like, get up. Get up. Cornelius saw an angel, and he didn't make it a, a worship. He obeyed that angel. The angel said, go get Peter. Is there anything wrong with angels? Absolutely not. You got to be careful. Intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshy mind. Education. So there's someone out there in verse 18. He's got a strange doctrine about angels. Again, I already mentioned the Catholic Church, Islam. Michael showed up to, uh, I forget his name, I don't care. Joseph Smith said Moroni or Baloni, whatever his name, showed up in New York. They are spoken about in chapter 18, known as 6 plus 6 plus 6. That equals 18. But there are angels. And not beholding the head, Jesus Christ, from which all the body by joints and bands have nourished nourishment ministered and knit together increases with the increase of God. We bound together our strength, our growing, our nourishment, our health is all from God as the body of Jesus Christ. You know what this first guy in 18 is? You know what these vain people that come in? You know what they are? They're like a cancer. They're like a, a little flug, a flu bug. They're like a little cold that comes to your body and attacks it. And then the whole body is messed up. I had in my foot, I had an infection. That little infection got into my foot. And there was times, man, my, my blood pressure went, went very high. I felt like I had the flu. I, man, I, I was just down and out in the emergency room. Why? Because I let a little infection go into my... And they said that anywhere in my body, any sore in my body, that, that infection came in. Now, that's, that's a physical but I can't do nothing to prevent that. Right now, I could have another virus coming into me. I could be sick next week. I can't prevent that. But Paul says, I can prevent the church body from getting sick, becoming diseased, or any heresies coming in. That's what he's warning us. We can keep the church healthy, but the church is not healthy. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ, there's that flesh. My flesh is dead with Christ. What can God do with his flesh? Doesn't it get impossible thoughts? Doesn't it do things that defy God? Doesn't it get you in trouble? Well, it's dead to Christ. 1 John 1, 9. Put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. Say, God, this stupid flesh. Oh. But the Spirit loves you, Lord. From the rudiments of the world. Why? As though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? And we're not talking about government, because he told us in Romans 13, and Peter, uh, excuse me, tell, tells us in his book, we're to obey the powers that be. So if Paul and Peter say under Nero, hey, obey the government, and he turns around and says, here, be subject to ordinances, well, it's not a contradiction. He's talking about religion. When a man comes up to you and says, you know, you guys sell magazines, you got to eat, you got, you can't eat, or you got to do this on this day, or you got to do this on that day. That's a religion. And Paul says, get away from it. Touch not. Now, this is religion. Taste not. Handle not. And a lot of people, they do this to get spiritual, to be spiritual. Look at me. I don't eat me. Or 40 days, I don't, I, I, I refrain from one thing in my life. Or I go over to this mountain, or I go do that. Look how spiritual I am. Which all are to perish with the using. So for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, 
This thing that people do in the, in the name of religion, in the eyes of God, perishes. It stinks. It's old. It's not useful. It's dead. It's thrown out. And Jesus says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But Lord, didn't we cast out spirits? Lord, didn't we do this? Lord, didn't we do that? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And those will be people that are relying on touch not, taste not, handle not, and do this and don't do that. And After the commandments and doctrines of men. So he's been talking about religion. He's not, not talking about the government. You don't go up and say, well, you know, I'm going to follow the law because I'm a Christian. No, that violates the Bible. Well, you say, well, Peter and John violated the law when they preached and they told them not to preach. Well, you're to obey God and where you obey God that goes against men, then you got to take the punishment. But there's nothing wrong with traffic laws. There's nothing wrong with property laws. Which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Listen, you can do it, but it, it's not going to be anything. It's a void. It's empty. Religion gets you no security of where you're going to go when you die. Religion will not get you to know who God is. Because religion opposes God and goes against what God is. So Paul is telling the Colossians, get away from religion. So if America wants to be a Christian nation again and revival, you got to kick religion out of her. And that ain't going to happen because the Constitution says you can serve any God you want. So you can forget about a national revival of America. You got to get away from religion. And today the churches are so filthy with, with Roman Catholicism. The, 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 the church has Easter eggs, Easter bunny. That's Rome. They have Christmas. That's Rome. It's filthy with religion and her acts. You got to clean that all up. You got to get that out. If you want God to do so. But other than that, religion goes against what God. 